Hi, welcome. Um, we're, we are Bethel Baptist Church in Tlai and uh, we usually meet on a, on a Wednesday evening uh, for our youth group. So uh, um, it'd be great to see you come along to that when we're uh, when we're allowed to open up again. Um, but we're hoping you've been enjoying the, the talks that we've been putting out. Feel free to subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel and uh, catch up and look at all the, the old ones if you've not had a chance yet. Or you can get in contact with us through the website through the contacts page there or through Facebook or Instagram. They're, they're all here. Um, however you found us, uh, we're glad you're here and uh, hope you'll be able to spend the next uh, just a few minutes with us as we think and uh, look into God's Word together. I'll pray and then we'll start. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your good gifts. Thank you that you are the God who hears us and Lord, we pray and we cry out to you that you will uh, be with us now as we study the Bible together. Amen. <clears throat> so do you know what it's like to be stuck in a rut? You know what I mean, you know, you, you just seem to be doing the same thing over and over again. Nothing seems to change, you know, and it doesn't matter what you do, you just keep coming back and doing the same things been stuck in a rut. You know, maybe maybe you're just making the, the same mistakes in the same way, with the same person, and it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter how many um, New Year's resolutions, it doesn't matter how many new leaves you turn over, you're just stuck in a rut, and you just can't get out of it, no matter how much you cry and ask for help. You know, you you cry to God, maybe, that's really good. You cry to God, but it seems as if nothing's happening. It doesn't seem like he's hearing you. Nothing's changing, at least, that you're aware of. Or, or maybe you, you like looking at the news, or you, you pick up things on your news feed, and you just, you just see the terrible things that are going on, and, and nothing seems to be putting it right. Whether that's through the pandemic, and we've seen so many thousands of people dying, or it's, it's a terrorist attack here, or it's a, an earthquake there. We just see a world full of hurt and pain and injustice. And maybe that forces you to cry out to God, why? Have you ever asked that question of God? Why God? Why is this happening? Why are you allowing this to happen? Why aren't you doing, God, anything about it? So you cry out. And you hear nothing. Well, if that's, if that's your experience, then you're not alone. Um, this prophet, this man called Habakkuk, he... He lived a long time ago. He's a, a minor prophet in the Old Testament. Um, not a lot said about him. He's only named twice. But Habakkuk understood and understood understands what you feel like. Because he felt the same. And here, here in this little tiny little book of, of Habakkuk, we read of some real real issues that he's having and he's bringing them to God. It's interesting, I said he was a, a prophet and that's how he's described. But actually, um, a prophet usually gives God's word of what's going to happen. Whereas, whereas this book is really, it's a conversation, if you like, a prayer conversation between Habakkuk and God. And, and Habakkuk is, if you like, really giving God some grief. He's praying, but he's saying, why is life like this, God? Do you even care? This is Habakkuk. This is a man in the Bible. He's got a book written off, written by him. Do you care, God? Can you do anything about it? All the violence, all the injustice, he says, all the, the wickedness, all the, the lawlessness, all the suffering. All those things that Habakkuk saw in his day, we see exactly the same today. There's, there's no different. And Habakkuk, he questions God's goodness because he's seen 
and is seeing so much injustice. So much evil, so much tragedy in the world. And he said this. Let me read it from you. It's on the screen behind me, but let me read it. It says this. Habakkuk, remember? He's praying. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence and you do not save? Why do you make me see iniquity and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. He's saying, God, why? Why, God? Why are you doing nothing? How about you? Do you, do you have things maybe going on in your life that, that you're complaining about? And actually you need to take to God in prayer. Don't be afraid to cry those why questions to God. He's a big God. He's the only one who can really do anything about them. So don't be afraid. Don't think it's wrong to cry out to God why. We see that Habakkuk did that. But actually we see that happening a lot in the Bible. A lot in the books of Psalms. We see the psalmist unloading his heart if you like. And complaining in some cases. Do we try and thick, fix things on our own? We thought a bit about that, didn't we, when we looked at the end of Judges and, you know, our solutions just tend to get confused and, and messed up and we just get worse and worse. But do you know what? As we saw and as the Bible teaches us, it's, it's God who ultimately fixes things. And so we do need to pray. Pray to God with your complaints. Pray, pray to him with, with your concerns. Pray to him with your questions. He's a big God. He can handle it. He can take it. So Habakkuk. Habakkuk cries out to God. And God answers him. God really does answer him. He says this in verse 5. It's... it's you think it sounds really good, doesn't it? God says, look among the nations, remember this is God speaking, and see, wonder and be astounded. For I am going to do a work in your days that you would not believe, even if I told you. God says, watch out. Just wait and see, God says. You will be amazed. No, more, more than that, you'll be astounded, Habakkuk, at what I'm going to do. Sounds great, doesn't it? That's what we want. That's what we want God to say when we cry out to him and see injustice around the world and, and uh, maybe even in our own village and town, maybe in school. And that's what we're dying for God to say, I'm going to sort it. And he is. But for Habakkuk, actually the answer that he got was terrifying. In fact, it was, it was unbelievable, the answer that God gave him. Why? Well, it's quite a small print, so I'll read it for you. But let me, let me just read it. Because God says this. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation who march through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings not their own. They are dreaded and fearsome. Their justice and dignity go forth from themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards, more fierce than the evening wolves. Their horsemen press proudly on. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like eagles, swift to devour. They all come for violence, all their faces forward. They gather captives like sand. At kings they scoff, and at rulers they laugh. They laugh at every fortress, for they pile up earth and take it. Then they sweep by like the wind and go on, guilty men, whose own might is their God. Oh God, God gives an answer all right to, to Habakkuk's prayer, his, his crying out. God seems to be saying, you want, you want violence? 
You think you've seen violence? Habakkuk, you've not seen anything yet. God says, what I'm about to do is unbelievable. If you like, I'm, I'm about to wreck havoc on Israel. You see, Israel, as we saw in the book of Judges, they just keep going further away from God and, and committing more and more and more grievous sins. So there is violence and injustice. And, and that's, that's a lot of the complaint that, that Habakkuk had for God. Why wasn't God doing anything about it? And God's answer was actually to send the Babylonians. Massive, fierce army and they were going to come in and they were going to, they were going to decimate Israel. They were going to punish, in effect. Bring justice. This intensely evil nation God was going to use to judge Israel. Wow. Some lessons there, aren't there, about what we pray for. God was answering Habakkuk's prayer, but not in the way that Habakkuk, 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 pick how you want to say it, Habakkuk, not in the way that he wanted, but it was the way that God was going to do. It was the way that God was going to move. And it, it was scary stuff. Terrifying stuff. God, you're really going to use this really, really evil nation for your purposes. God says, yes, I am. But they're not going to get, stuck, get off scot-free. They will face justice when I'm good and ready. So be careful what we pray for. But don't be afraid to pray and cry out to God. See, Habakkuk thought that God wasn't working. He cried out and he thought nothing was happening. He thought God, God wasn't listening. Maybe God, yeah, God just had other things on his mind. He, whatever, God didn't appear to be answering his prayer. But the truth of the matter was that God was working. And God was working out his purpose. And the truth is the same today. God is working even today. We might feel that nothing seems to happen. We're stuck in the same old rut. Our country, perhaps our world, is stuck in the same old rut. We see the injustice, we see the poverty, we see earthquakes, we see all that's wrong with this world and we, we cry out to God, why? Why aren't you doing anything, God? Well, I thought church was good news. All you're telling me, Matt, is bad stuff. All this doom and gloom. What's going on? But there is good news, and, and there's good news even here in Habakkuk. See, in Habakkuk, we see that God is punishing weaken, uh, wickedness, and God is bringing justice. That's good news. But the really good news was that even though this evil nation of the Babylonians was going to come in and and just cause havoc in Israel. Habakkuk could say in chapter 2 verse 4. And the righteous shall live by his faith. Faith. That was the, the answer in Habakkuk's day. And that's the answer in our day. You see that, that little phrase is actually quoted again three times in the New Testament. All about having faith. Living by faith. Pleasing God by having faith in him. And that's the bottom line. Today is to have faith in God. There's a, a definition of faith. It says this, it's a complete trust or, or confidence in somebody or something. That's the definition of faith. <coughs> so who do you have your faith in? Is it, is it in yourself? Do you just think, well, do you know what? I'm all I need. I can sort out my, my own problems, my own, issue, my own issues. I know where I'm going. But the Bible says, no, that's, that's not good enough. Because God says we're not good enough for heaven. We all commit wrong things, say wrong things, think wrong things. The Bible calls it sin. 
So actually, no, we can't have faith in ourselves because we'll let ourselves down. Or, or how about friends? Perhaps you've got a really good bunch of friends and they're really supportive. And do you know what? That's, that's brilliant. That's a real encouragement, isn't it? But do you know what? At some point, they'll let you down. When you need them most, perhaps they won't be there for you. So don't put, don't put your faith in your friends. Or, or how about family? If you've got a great family, do you know what? That's a real blessing, isn't it? A real blessing from God. If your family's great and they care for you and they love you and they support you. But they will let you down. You can't depend on them completely. So you can't have faith in your family. And there's lots of other things we could have picked. We could have picked in, in money or in in power or politics or whatever it may be, but these things will always let us down. And the Bible is, is really clear, really clear about faith and who we need to put our faith in. And it's Jesus. The Bible says we need to have faith in Jesus. We need to believe what he did, believe that he's the Son of God, that he came to earth, Believe that he, he died in our place to forgive us of our sin. We need to have faith. And we need to have faith that, that when we, we say sorry for the wrong things that we do, that's called repentance. That means turning away from them and turning towards the Lord Jesus in what? In faith. Believing that what he did is so special. So special. It's, uh, it's interesting, isn't it, that um, when God spoke to Habakkuk, he says, I'm going to do something amazing that you won't believe in. And it was a judgment. Well, actually, he did something even more amazing in history. The Son of God came to earth. That's mind-blowing. He died on a cross to pay the price for my sin, to, to take the punishment for my sin and your sin. That's, that's almost unbelievable. But it's not, it's true. And that's why we need to have faith in him. And then, and then when you truly put your faith in God, you're going to be amazed at what God will do with you. So Habakkuk, remember Habakkuk, remember, cry out to God, tell him all the things that you're worried about, that you're concerned about, put your trust in the Lord Jesus, turn to him to have your sins forgiven and be amazed at what God will do in your life. But you need to have faith. If anything in this talk or maybe at the other talks that you've heard uh, maybe puzzling you maybe you, you don't understand some of the things that we've spoken about or you've got questions then please get in touch please get in touch there's there's no such thing as a stupid question we'd love to hear from you so get in you know use the comment section or the website or facebook or whatever it may be however you feel comfortable get in touch if you want us to pray for you or, or pray with you, then oh, we'd really love to do that. It'd be our absolute pleasure to pray with you. So thanks for spending this time with us. Um, look out for the next video in about a week's time. Um, if you can't wait, go back and look at some of the old ones. And uh, Take care and we'll see you soon.